Alrighty, well, good evening, everybody. Well, <clears throat> well, as of recent, there's been a lot of stuff going on about Dungeons and Dragons and their new, uh, their, um, their big change to their licensing policy. Um, I'll, I'll talk more about it here in a bit, but, uh, a lot of people are not happy, uh, myself included, despite the fact that I've never actually, I've never actually played a single tabletop game, or, yeah, despite the fact that I've never actually played the actual full physical version of Dungeons and Dragons, instead just playing, you know, RPG video games and all that, but anyway, um, but yeah, I'm not a big fan of the changes either, um, so I'm, I figured I'd throw in my two cents, but uh, I have uh, I have done a little bit of research on this. Uh, just watched various videos, um, read various read various uh, Google stuff. So I kind of have a little bit of background info, a little bit of source material on what's going on. So yeah, and then like usual, I'm gonna have some music running in the background. Um, just totally out of whim. This was uh, music I used to I used to listen to. Back when I played a, a congregate game called Epic War back in the 2010s. Um, I think it's called Unending March or something like that. But it's a short one. I'm going to have it on loop. So I'm probably not going to have it on that long. I'll probably switch to like a full-fledged album or something. So, But anyway, let me go ahead and fire her up. And I'm going to have to turn this down a bit. So I forgot to do a sound check earlier. So I'm going to have to... turn that down a little bit. Okay. So, anyway. Um, D&D's licensing controversy explained. Here's why you should care. Well, and what it means for you. Um, I... I already know... I already know what I'm gonna say for a lot of this. But I'll... I'll try to pace myself. Over apparently proposed changes to the tabletop RPG's open game license. Um. So. Okay, I'll look. So, what is the OGL? The open game license is probably one of the biggest reasons why Dungeons and Dragons is so damn popular. Um. It's it's basically Creative Commons. It's ba and it's also the way. Uh, me and all my content works. Um, my my channel is a non-monetized channel. It's um it's a create all of my works are Creative Commons works. You're free to use it however you want. It's free to use. Um, D and D was the same thing too. The open game license. Again, this is why uh, D one of the reasons why D and D was so popular. You could use any of its content in whatever way you see fit. And D&D spawned a lot of different variations, too. Um, I guess Pathfinder was one. I think, um, I don't, I've only watched maybe little tiny bits and pieces here and there, but Critical Role, I am under the impression they decided to go ahead and do a, a whole custom-made version of D&D's 5th uh, edition, if I'm understanding it right. They just, they homebrewed the living hell out of D&D. But again, the Again, there's lots of other Shadow Run. That was another uh, that was another RPG that I was really into. I had a bunch of the books and stuff. Um, I even had the game on Super Nintendo too. Hell, that's the Super Nintendo game was what got me into the uh, the tabletop version. So yeah, I think Shadow Run was another offshoot of D and D. But you kind of get the idea here. All all kinds of people, all kinds of different uh, systems and game styles and all and whatnot. All of these sprang from D and D. So, yeah, allows third parties to create written products. So it's like I said, it's it's basically it's basically a Creative Commons agreement. Now they, I I just remembered they there are a few exceptions. I know um the uh like the uh, the I guess the mascot like you can't use any of their mascots like um. D&D's mascot is the Beholder. You know, the big, the big old eyeball with a little eye st eyeball stalks on top. You can't use that. You can't use a Beholder in any of your content. Because, again, it's 
it's the mascot of D&D. So, um, there were like a, I think, uh, it's called the Mind Flayer. Um, basically it's a, it's a humanoid body with an octopus for, an, for a head. That's another, that's another big time icon. I think that's no, that's another mascot of D&D. So you can't use that in any of your uh, content. So, but otherwise, everything else is fair game. And this, he's got to talk about it too. This is something else I was thinking about as well. Okay, I think I read it wrong. That's the, there are some restrictions that stop you. Well then, how the hell did all? Now, how the hell did the Baldur's Gate video game slip through the cracks then? Unless they actually did pay a licensing fee or something. But yeah, that was... Uh, I was gonna... I'm hoping to bring a... A video game perspective on here too, because... The change to the o, the change to the OGL... I think that's gonna really fuck up the RPG... The uh, RPG industry too, the RPG universe. Because now the RPG video games are going to be totally different now. So, but yeah, kind of going back to what I was originally saying. It's... You can, uh, you can make your own adventures, you can make your own game systems. Um, homebrew. Uh, that's another, uh, that's another popular term that gets thrown around the D&D universe. Everybody does their own custom campaigns, their own custom rules, you know, custom monsters, etc all using uh, Dungeons and Dragons as a temple. Yeah. Yeah, Pathfinder. I think I said this earlier, too. Built on earlier editions of D&D. I think, uh, but again, I think Critical Role, I think I, if I'm guessing right, they kind of do their own little custom version of D&D uh, &D as well. So, I'm going to... So basically, I'm going to give uh, my version, again, the update, basically they're taking, they're taking everything that was great about D&D &D and they fucked it up. Now, uh, last I heard, you have, to, if, uh, if a content creator, a company, if, um, if, Whatever works, whatever D, whatever D and D work, or whatever D and D content that they're using, that makes them like at least seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars in one year, annually. Um, you have to, you have to pay uh, Wizards of the Coast like twenty five percent of the, twenty five percent of the profit. Um, but yeah, so, but I also uh. After doing some research on this, this kind of parallels with uh, the rap industry. Back in the, um, it's, I think it's one of the reasons why uh, lots of people love old school rap so much. Because back then, you know, back in the, back in the 80s, you could use uh, music samples freely. You know, nobody was trying to stop you. But that lasted until like the late 80s, early 90s or somewhere around there when I think it was major record labels. They started suing these rap artists for a copyright infringement. I think that's the term. Now, the these major record labels are now suing them for royalties. They want you know, they want a cut of uh, all the of the money that all these rap artists are making by using uh, samples of their music. So that just pretty much kneecapped the rap industry. Same, I think the same thing is going to happen here. You know they're. They're pretty much gonna kneecap the tabletop industry now doing this. And I think the same, I think it's gonna real severely impact video games too, RPGs. Now, if they wanna do anything D&D related, they're, they're basically, they're, I, I guess uh, the qual, I guess uh, the quality of uh, tabletop tabletops are now going to be 25% shittier now, because they got to pay out uh, 25%. You know, 
They gotta pay 25% to the D&D &D Mafia. Or, yeah, the Wizards of the Coast Mafia. There we go. They gotta pay the graft. So... So I didn't think the uh, tabletop industry, despite me never ever having actually having done it before, it's that it's gonna suffer now. So, but let me um, let me go ahead and move on, since uh, I think I pretty much ran out of things to say already. Um, this doesn't invalidate the original OGL. But basically, they just they just. Took it and ripped it up. Threw it in the paper shredder. Um, I don't... This doesn't apply to me much. And plus, like lots of other people, I have I still don't have a clear-cut definition as to what NFTs are. Allows termination of the way. Her content is blatantly racist, sexist, homophobic. I would like to think that those, they'd all, they'd always had that. I mean, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take a drink of some water here real quick. Okay, and it does say that down here too. Yeah, that's what I was reading. That's what I, that's what I saw too. Anybody, uh, anybody earning over 750 grand a year. You gotta pay a uh, 25% royalty. Now, I did a uh, one thing. I one thing I did uh, rem I did recall, and uh, to this day, I still think it's a great tax idea. And it came, and it came from from of all people, Donald Trump. Like this is back in the 90s. Uh, I think he did another presidential run back then. But I loved his idea. All businesses and individuals with a net worth of 10 million or more. They gotta pay a 15% income tax one time. Like, it's not ongoing. You just gotta pay 50% income, 15% of your profits once. So, but I kinda, I kinda thought that this would be a, this would be a great alternative right here. Instead of having to do it, instead of having to do it every single time, you know, every single time that some, that your content goes over 750K, just pay that 25% uh, royalty fee one time, just once. So that could be a good alternative to this. But, um, but again, um, and, uh, I think, um, I don't know his name, content creator, Penguin something. But uh, he's, uh, I guess uh, he was saying that a lot of people were saying kind of the same thing too. Well, no big deal. I mean, the only ones that are really going to get hit is uh, Critical Role, uh, Dimension 20, you know, the, the, real, the real big heavy hitter tabletop companies. But again, uh, for those... You know, I think a, a lot of people, the only, the only way they found out about D&D was through a Critical Role. You know, not many, uh, I think most people that are into D&D nowadays got their start on Critical Role. That was where they first discovered it. So, if this goes through, they're going to be pissing off a lot of people. And again, Critical Role is... Like I said some odd minutes ago, it's not going to be 25% shittier. You know, because a, a quarter of their quality now is now going to have to go to the graft of Wizards of the Coast. And then I, there is a. It doesn't seem to be stated here, but. There's also in that, um, in the new update, um, like all price, all prices and numbers subject to change at any time or something like that. That was the, uh, that was a big one too. Cause 
I mean, 750 grand, that, this number could change. They could just drop it. They could just go ahead and say, all people, all products, not just the, not just the rich ones, but all of them that are using the uh, license have to pay 25%. They could easily say that now. Greek can really overtake them. And then one day, that would cause them to lose. So, it's nothing but bad here. Okay, and then it sounds like, um, it sounds like they're saying the same thing here too. There's, there's gonna be ripple effects. Everybody's, everybody's gonna get hurt by this. Um, kind of a, kind of a, kind of a side note here. Um, this is related yet unrelated. Another one of my favorite YouTube channels, Soft White Underbelly. Um, it's where this guy, he uh, goes to like slums and uh, run down places. He uh, he'll bring in like prostitutes, pimps, drug addicts, um, like psychopaths, um, child abuse victims. You know, like drug dealers, um, sex trafficking victims, etc. He'll bring them in and he'll interview them. Well, well, YouTube, YouTube is now cracking down on like just, you know, offensive language, nudity, etc. Which, um, which a lot of this guy's, uh, a lot of the guys that he's interviewed, especially the girls, they're, they're basically nude. I mean, they're homeless. So, I mean, they can't, they can't exactly dress nice. So yeah, um, but yeah, YouTube's cracking down on his channel and actually demonetizing some of his videos. So recently now, they're hard as hell to watch. It just, cause now gang members, you know, fully covered in tattoos now have to wear sweaters. So trying to comply with YouTube's uh, community guidelines or whatever. So now, the stuff, I mean, I mean, what are the, what I mean, what are the cool, what are the cool things about the channel is just seeing these homeless people and how grungy they look, you know? And the aforementioned gang members, especially the Mexican ones, a lot of them are, they're just basically covered head to toe in tattoos. They look cool as hell. But nope, that turned to shit because now they all have to cover themselves up, uh, cover themselves up with sweatshirts. So, I mean, it, that, I mean that's, you know, that's kind of lame. So, they got, I want to say, uh, hang on, hang on, I gotta, I'm whining a bit. I think with maybe one exception that I could think of at the moment, um, other, you know, like the, uh, other grungy people, I think they have to do the same thing. They gotta cover up some, like some of the prostitutes, they gotta, they have to, they have to cover up, but anyway, I'm, I'm, what I'm, what I'm seeing in Soft White Underbelly, I think is what's gonna happen here. You know, now Critical Role's content is probably gonna probably gonna go down to shit or not because now 25% of what they make has to go to Wizards. Um, I think Dimension 20. Um, I'm trying to. There's another one. Um, the Idol Game, Idol Champions, the Forgotten Realms. They'll do D&D sessions, like they'll do online D&D. Um, I can't remember the name of it. But you know the the quality of their sessions, their I mean their quality is probably gonna go down the toilet too because a good chunk of the money they make is not gonna have to go to go to the Wizards Mafia. So so yeah so all that you know all the all them great shows all them great D and D shows that you guys are watching aren't gonna be so great now because. But let me, um, changes going forward. To start with, it's important to note that the original OGLE's products were a marketing would no longer be valid. I, in case I didn't say earlier too, um, 
RPG video games are gonna suffer too. Uh, Baldur's Gate. Uh, so if, if a Baldur's Gate 4 ever came out, it's probably gonna be ass. It's, it's probably not gonna, you know, or it's basically gonna be a shell of its former self. You know, okay? I mean, the first two were freaking masterpieces because of the OGL. Um, I haven't played Baldur's Gate. I've only seen tiny bits and pieces, so I don't know. Never played it. I don't know how how good of a game it is. But assuming assuming it's as great as the previous two, the OGL was probably the reason why. That means the publishers would have to create a new system by the proposed deadline. Both the new and all content would have. Oh damn! Yup. So, yeah. So all that, all that good old, that good old school stuff, all that's going bye bye. So. Yup. And again, I'm, I'm not seeing. This isn't just gonna be for um. This isn't just gonna be for like the, 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 tabletop books. A lot of other stuff is also going to suffer because of this. This money is used to pay writers, artists, designers, and more. Yeah, pretty soon they're going to have to start hiring immigrant Mexicans because they work so cheap. So you're going to have uh, immigrant Mexicans, Russian, Russian, immigrant Mexicans, Russians, Africans, etc. They're going to be the ones doing the D&D stuff. So it's like, a, it's like I said too. Um, sorry for going super off topic like that, but. It's going to follow the same fate of soft white underbelly. I mean, it's going to get to where I can hardly watch the stuff anymore. I mean, I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll just, I'll try to stick with the uh, current topic here. Yeah, reducing the take would therefore squeeze companies in questions. It, that's exactly what I was saying too. So a stand, cuts of some discretion would follow. Yep. Yup, yup. Leads to a drop in scale, quality, or frequency for products. It's it's like I said. Content is going to be 25% shittier now. It's not going to be as good. Across the result in delays is pump the brakes and reassess the situation. Yup. And, um... I know in the video game industry, in fact, I just found this out recently. The Atari 2600 game, uh, E.T. and Pac-Man, again, for the 2600, two of the worst games ever made, they were made, they were that bad because the, the, uh, game developers only had like a month and a half to make it, like a super short deadline. So, yeah, you wonder the quality was such shit. Same, same thing here. Same thing's gonna happen. Prize and released to develop an alternative game systems instead. And there was a. I don't have it with me. I can't remember the name of it, but there is a YouTube video that just came out, I think, today or yesterday. But again, I can't remember the name of it, but it's a new. I think it's a, a system neutral tabletop system or something like that. I don't. I don't remember the exact. Like Kaibo. K A I V O. Kaibo, I want to say. But yeah, that's what's going on right now. Um, I want to say um, another RPG like Shadowrun. I wonder if that'll make a resurgence then. Well, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll keep moving along. It'll hit smaller creators too. Yep, I just said that. Less dramatically. Well, it scales, I mean, 25%. Take another drink. Pay royalties if you don't earn money. But having to register it with wizards and report and And again, um, I think uh, the, the channel's name, Penguin, Penguin, some letters and numbers at the end of it. He was saying, uh, um, he was also saying that uh, wizards, 
can change can uh, can change the uh, the license at any moment. So you know you might I mean you might be out of the you might have dodged a bullet now, but that bullet might be coming back later. Cause again, it does. They can make it so. They can make it so everybody has to pay 25 percent, not just the ones that make over 700, 750k a year. Okay, where did I go? All mention of perpetual worldwide rights given to creator. President section for the original GL and one of the Okay, they just said it. They just said it right here. Can modify or terminate this agreement for any reason what's give 30 days notice. Um uh, yeah, I saw this. 30 days ain't gonna be enough. I know uh if I ever got evicted from my apartment, I think I have either 30 or 60 days. Um, I've been living in my apartment for 12 years, see, and I'm a hoarder. So you could only imagine you could only imagine the hell I'd have to go through to try to get all completely moved out of here in 30 days. So and um I think Yeah, Penguin said the same thing too. They could easily use this as an excuse too. So, so now they can really, so yeah, now they can really fuck you in the ass with no, with no Vaseline. But all they got to do is say, 30 days notice and it'll be okay. So yeah, but whether or not it's owned by their creator, not exclusive, perpetual, irrevocable, worldwide, so that's my little bit. Worldwide sub-licensable royalty free license use. I don't, I don't understand what that means. Free products like community builds. So, but again, at least as of right now, I mean, if you're, you know, if you're, if you and your buddies are playing D&D out in a log cabin out in the woods or something, yeah, it ain't gonna, it ain't gonna bother you for now. But again, the, the quality of the products that you're going to be getting are going to be um, 25% worse now because 25% of that money is now going to the graft at the Wizards Mafia. Actual plays like Critical. You're not being charged to watch the show, but again, Critical Role, I mean, they rake in, they rake in a shit ton of money. You know, and uh, and something else too. I just now thought of this. Critical Role. They're also known for all the charity streams they do. They do a lot of they do a lot of charity work. I got a feeling what's going to happen now. If this if all this goes through, Critical Role is now going to have to. They're gonna, really going to have to crank that charity up to eleven now. They're they're going to have to don't they're going to have to donate like crazy. Basically. They're gonna have to become billionaires overnight, and having to having to pump all their profits into uh, into charities and use them as tax write-offs. That way, so they don't get taxed, or so wizards can't come after them for the 25 percent. So I'm pretty sure they'd want all their they'd rather have all them they'd rather have all their profits go to charity than to wizards. Easy to see why there's such concern over what could be the new and not necessarily improved. Delete doc. This may change. Wizards is. Oh. Uh. uh. Good luck on that. Um. At my job, Walmart. Um. And. And some of the other jobs I've worked at over the years, usually whenever higher management says something like, well, we wish to roll out this new program that we have. What Do you think it'll work? You could sit there and say, no, man, that's a stupid idea. It'll never work. Well, what if we tried it all? What if we tried it like this? 
No, man, that still wouldn't work. It, it's a bad idea. Well... Well, let's... Let's try doing it this way instead. Like, they're gonna roll out... They're gonna roll out the new program whether you... No matter what you say. I mean, you can... You can argue against it until you turn blue in the face, but they're still gonna... They're still gonna roll out that new system no matter what. I'm, I'll bet you... Um, I'll bet Wizards is gonna be like that too. You could sit here and tell a wizard how the new OGL is every kind of wrong. And, um, they'll, they'll try to do, like, little alternatives, maybe, at best, but there's, they're just various ways of fucking you over. You know, so... Well, it looks like we're at the end of it, so... But yeah, it, again, for as of, he don't want to do that. As of right now, just your little ma and pa homebrew, you know, the kind, you know, the kind you do in like your mom's basement, way out in the, way out in the boonies. Yeah, for right now, it's not going to be effective or not going to be affected. But you never know. Some point in the future, they might suddenly decide to fake Jackson and they got to, they got to do shakedowns of anybody that uses their content. So. So, but otherwise, well, that's that on that. I just wanted to give my take on this. So, just needed to get it off my chest. But otherwise, hey, thanks for, uh, thanks for watching, everybody. Thanks for listening. I really appreciate that. And I'll see you all next time. Bye for now.